Hey guys, it's Ken again with another set of UVM interview questions. Today, I'd like to go over the protocol or the handshake that happens uh, between a UVM sequence, sequencer, and driver interface and that. So there uh, are various ways this particular question could be asked. It could be um, describe the handshake that happens between the UVM sequence sequencer driver and the DAP, or it could be how is the UVM sequencer connected to the UVM driver um, and here uh, there are two different ways um, this interaction of protocol happens using the get next item and item done method protocol or the get in the put methods of the driver so let's first go over the get next item and item done combination methods so here you have your sequence which has the start item method the randomize and the blocking finish item so both the start item and finish item are blocking calls you have the sequencer with its arbitration scheme uh, for the priority of the sequence essentially then you have um, a request sequence item 54 and a response um, sequence item 54. Here you have on this side, um, on the sequencer side, you have the export port. Here. On the driver side, here, as you can see, um, you're using the get next item method and the item done method combination. So when we do that, um, we take we send the response essentially through here and I'll go over um, how that happens then you have your dot so the first thing is you invoke or call the blocking call or uh, within the sequence called the start item once that happens the sequencer is informed um, or basically you are waiting for a grant and once it's uh, once the sequencer grants you permission, then you can perform the randomization at this stage. Whenever a randomization happens after the start item, then uh, it's considered just in time or late randomization, because at this point the test bench variables and the environment variables are most up to date. The next step is to invoke the finish item, which again is a blocking call this will put uh, the transaction into the request sequence item 5 of the sequencer here I'm showing the actual connection that happens between the um, port and the export port of the driver where you're sending the request sequence item and essentially the get next item is the call uh, that the driver makes which is a, again a blocking call on this side um, so the FIFO uh, once it has a uh, request sequence item available this particular um, call is going to get unlocked and you're going to send um, the information onto the dot or essentially toggle um, the dot pins uh, with the um, request sequence item uh, values once that's done um, you call the item done here you send back the response item and you basically push it into the response sequence item typo of the sequencer the finish item like we discussed earlier is a blocking call and it's waiting on the response once it receives the response it then blocks and the transaction completes so this is pretty much the flow when we use the get next item and item done uh, methods um, and this is the protocol that gets followed between the sequencer or rather the sequence sequencer driver and the dot and back with the response to the sequence let's go to the next um, method combination which is the get and the put methods for the driver so the other question that can get asked is 
how is the UVM sequencer connected to the UVM driver? Or again, the same protocol between the sequence sequencer and the driver and the dot. Uh, explain that based off of put get methods. This typically um, is sort of like a more ad hoc way of doing the same thing. And this is typically done when you are expecting a response back to the sequence uh, from the bat, for instance. If you're monitoring something and you want to sense the response back um, to the sequence, that's when you're going to be using this. So again, this time around, you have your sequence with your start item, randomize method, and the finish item. The additional method that gets called, again, this is a blocking call, the get response, as the name suggests, it waits on the response. Then you have your sequencer with the arbitration scheme. Again, your request FIFO and the response FIFO. This time, the difference is you you are going to be sending the response back, the modified response rather, back to the uh, to the analysis port and populating the FIFO. Then you have your driver. This time around, you have the get and the put method combination. And of course, the analysis port on this side, and then that. So again, you call the start item. You wait on uh, the sequencer to grant you access. Once uh, the permission is granted, then you can perform randomization. Then invoke the finish item. And once that happens, you put the uh, transaction into the sequencer FIFO and then call the get response at that point. Then again, similar to that um, um, get next item call, you have this get function, uh, get, get method, which basically uh, pops um, from the request sequence uh, item FIFO of the sequencer and gets the next item then basically gets the values and drives the dot pin through the interface. Once that's done, um, it basically uh, calls the put method. And now this time around, you put the response, and, and this response is typically the modified one. Let's say you're getting some error response or some, some dependency that you need um, to send back to the sequence for the uh, subsequent transaction that's going to come through. So anyway, so you send, send the modified response here and through the analysis port onto the export port of the sequencer, the response FIFO gets populated. Then as we discussed earlier, the get response is a blocking call and was waiting on the response back from the sequencer. Once the sequence receives it back, you unblock the get response and that completes the transaction. Um, so that's about it. Um, so guys, let me know if you have any other questions, comments, or if you have a particular question that you'd like me to create a video on, I would be more than happy to do so. So thank you so much. Take care.